Man, um, compared to last episode, <laughs> this episode, and I got some theories about why that is. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't want to get too much into the weeds of it, but I just want to focus on if you're watching X Men 97 um, and you just watched episodes five, like, I, I can't remember anything that Marvel slash Disney has put out with that sort of emotional impact. Can you? Um, and it's few and far between. There's probably the finale of Loki mm-hmm. and some of, what is it, Endgame? Mm-hmm. Or the, yeah, and, what was it before yeah. Endgame? Endgame, maybe I can't th- anything before Endgame. I can't think of it. No, no. What, what, what were those two movies? The two Infinity War, Infinity War. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Infinity War. They didn't have Infinity War in right. Endgame. Yep. I would say that, and that's it. Like this is pretty it's, much. It's, not, it's absolutely incredible. Um. So I'll just give a real quick synopsis. If any, if anybody's listening to this and hasn't watched the episode for some weird reason, um, episode five. Remember it of X Men ninety yeah. seven. So this episode has a ton going on, and it's really almost to the point where it's almost overwhelming. Um, so we, though the uh, X Men are being interviewed by a woman named Tisha Tyler, I think her name is. And interesting enough, in the comics, I think her and Beast actually have a, a relationship. They actually date, I think. Interesting. So that was that was a cool thing. Um, they're being interviewed. Um, Magneto, Gambit, and Rogue are going to Kenosha. Because the UN has made it its own country, and it's a mutant. They're country. recognizing it as a, a member uh, state of the yeah. UN. Yeah, so that's really important. Mm-hmm. Uh, Val Cooper is there when they when they arrive, and Val Cooper is from the comics. I don't think I've mentioned that Val Cooper is from the comics, and she spent time in the comic X Factor for a while, written by Period David. She's not the same as the Val that's in the. No, okay. no, right. no, different different person. Uh, and when, and also who's there is Madeline Pryor, which we didn't think right. we'd see so soon, but she, all of a sudden she's like the clone of Jean Grey is now a prominent member of the G- G- Genosha High Council or whatever, and has right. other mutants there working too, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, and Magneto meets with the council, and the council has Banshee in it, Mar McTaggart, who is a human in this That was show, interesting, but, Yeah. Yeah, but we know. I've talked to you about this. Mar McTaggart is not a, is not a human. She's a mutant. Um, but I don't in, know if she's a in the I Fox she, movies. She was a human too. Yeah, but the thing is, in canon, she kept that a secret. She always told people she was a mutant. She was a human. Yeah, oh, like people know that she was a mutant. But her mutant power is weird because her, her mutant power only activates when she dies. So she she her her mutant power is reincarnation. So it doesn't oh. really. So she she can respawn basically. Yeah, but here's the deal. That might come up later, which is really important. Mm-hmm. But I'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, also in the council is um, Shaw, who is a part of Hel- the, Hel- the, Hel- the Hellfire Club. The White Queen. Sebastian Emma Frost, Shaw. Sebastian Shaw, yep. The White yeah. Queen. The White Queen. Uh, and so it looks like a, this, is, this is very interesting. And I'm trying to figure out what the writers and producers are trying to do with the show. And These are members I, of the Hellfire Club. Yes, but also in the comics currently. Did they did year, they say did they reference Hellfire in this episode at all? I don't. No, no, they think didn't. that they did. Okay, yeah. In the last few years, in the comics, these members have been called the Quiet Council, and they've ruled Kawaka, Kalka, Kau. Ka- it's hard to pronounce. <laughs> Kalkara, Kau, 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 whatever, Kau, Kau. So is that this is G- Genosha? Is it no, the same no, no. thing? So or? This is really, I'm going to try to explain this to everybody, especially okay. you. Right. In the comics, Magneto did rule Genosha. 
Okay. But there was a, a, an event on Genosha that was a massacre where a lot of mutants died. I don't know the whole details. I don't think it was Sentinels. I think something else happened. Mm. Uh, and then that country kind of went to kaput. Okay. Then Magneto and Professor X founded a new island called Krakow. Krakow? Krakow. Krakow. And that, Krakow. It's Krakow. I'm going to say it like that. Okay. And that island is actually alive. And it's apparently it's a mutant island. I'm not sure how it works. But they use the powers of the island to create a complete mutant state. So mm. Kenosha was like the first trial run. And then okay. the second island, Kakao, was the real island. And a lot of what we saw in this episode in X-Men 97 was very familiar to the things we saw in House of X. Uh, and so we're getting a lot of House of X vibes here, which mm. is super interesting. And why I like it is because these are really good storylines. and. People who read the comics currently are loving this because of that. And the people who never read the comics are really getting some great storytelling elements. So it's really cool. Um, but that's not the right. only thing. That, that's not the only thing. Um, and so we got a bunch of different... We get Rogue and Magneto and, and Gambit are walking around the island. And you get a ton of cameo appearances. So I saw on your list um, the, tra the translucent little pink man that you saw was named yeah. Bob. He's from the everybody you saw was from the comics. So first of all, so okay. everybody was from the comics. There's actually a link I put in the show notes that has a far deeper sort of like behind the scenes uh, Easter eggs that I have uh, okay. put together. So, okay. you, so awesome. if you want to see all the Easter eggs and all the cool stuff, that link's really good. Be very careful because it's going to do some speculation stuff. So just ignore that. Um, Nightcrawler was there, and Nightcrawler is on the Quiet Council in the comics. So it was great to see him. Nightcrawler, oh, cool. one of my favorite uh, X Men mm -hmm. characters. I uh, I didn't remember him having a German accent in the original uh, cartoon, so I went back and watched one episode, and he does actually. It's not as thick in the original as it is in this episode. Yeah, but, it's pretty uh, thick in this episode. But he does have a German accent. I just never, mm -hmm. I guess, I never picked up on that as a kid or yeah. when I was younger. So meanwhile. While the ex, while Rogue, Gambit, and uh, Magneto are on Genosha, we go back to um, you know New York where the X Men are, and apparently right. Jean Grey kind of like made out with Wolverine for a second. Yeah, which was a little like uh like and like I want the the key word in the in the first half in the first half of this episode. In the Props episode, to Wolverine for like kind of shutting that down pretty quick. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. But it was just drama. It was so much drama. And I didn't oh, yeah. mind it too much because it was interesting drama. And it was comic accurate drama. I, but there was, there was a lot of drama. I and didn't it, totally get what was going on with Scott and Jean and Madeline. So what was, was happening was... very confusing. What, so G, Scott was just kind of daydreaming. And he was hanging out in his mind with Madeline Pryor. And she's but daydreaming he, at the council hanging out with him. Yeah, so they're sharing a psychic rapport, but that psychic rapport was supposed to be a connection between him and the original Jean Grey. So he right. basically kind of cheated on Jean Grey. And what's yeah. really interesting is like he did the It's been exact going on same, for about a month. Yeah, he did the exact same thing with Emma Frost, the White Queen in the comic books. Oh. So, they're taking they're taking every cool thing you could think of from the comics and slamming it in here in different ways, which is really interesting. And the X Men have a lot to slam in there, trust me. So there's a lot they can pull from. And if the writers are pulling on this level, if the writers are doing this level of work right now, I can't imagine what they'll do later. Hmm. So of course that gets everybody upset. Um, Jean Grey and Madeline Pryor have some kind of weird psychic energy thing, but we don't know what that is. I might have some speculation about that, so we'll get to that. That spike in their forehead. That yeah, made their that nose symbolizes some kind of psychic thing going on. Yeah. Right, yeah. Meanwhile, um, Magneto asked Rogue to be his partner, so like his queen, yeah, his queen. and Genosha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she kind of breaks up with Gambit. Um, but then she kind of breaks up with Magneto too. She decides not to be his queen, but she does kiss him. And we, and again, we understand that she can touch Magneto because of his powers, which is interesting. Well, she like, I think what happened was, you know, her and her and Gambit were having that conversation. And he tells her he's like, you know, some things are 
deeper than skin, um, referencing their relationship. Yeah. And, you know, she can't touch him. You know, it's a big deal. Um, and so she goes with Magneto, who she can. And also she gets to help out all the mutants, which she wants to do. But I think she realizes after, you know, having that dance and kissing Magneto that even though she can touch him, her love for Gamma is deeper and uh, more than just surface level. So that's why she breaks up with Magneto. Yeah, and I want to give a shout out to two of the voice actors here. The, uh, and if you can, real quick, if you can give me the name, it'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. The, the voice actor for um, Rogue and the voice actor for Magneto. Rogue is excellent. Lenore Zahn. Excellent job. Magneto is Matthew Watterson. They both did excellent jobs with this. They, yeah. I felt uh, just every time they talked, I mean, Gambit was fine, but Rogue and Magneto definitely um, was really, really good. Um, then we get a cameo of Cable. He shows up and right. Madeline realizes That's that realized That's right Cable, after the right after we realized that um not only has Jean Grey had that spike in her forehead, but also Madeline, Madeline. Pryor. Yeah, and they, and shout out to the Ryers for let for not getting rid of Madeline Pryor too soon. Thanks for bringing her back, using her for drama, using her for make the story more interesting. Mm-hmm. Giving Madeline Pryor some more work is really great because she doesn't get that much work in the comics. And to bring her in to this episode like this is really good and really smart on their part. Um, yeah, Cable shows up, and then Madeline Pryor realizes that Cable is her son from the future. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we get Cable, which is awesome. And he's, he's trying to warn them or something, but it's too late. And yeah, he then, says he's coming. Who, like, who do you think he's talking about? Well, that's the question. I don't know. Because we get... I don't think it was... I think he was trying to predict the attack. Um, but I have a feeling it's someone else. And I'm going to save that for after I, we talk about the attack. Okay. Um, so we get a Sentinel attack. He doesn't last and, long. He slips back into his own time. In, yep. And we get a Sentinel attack. From, and the Sentinel that you saw, the big, massive Sentinel, mm-hmm. looks just like the one from the comics. And it's a storyline by Grant Morrison called E is for Extinction. And he, and that mute, and that, I, I remember looking at that and thinking I've seen that before. And it's in the comics. It's like the three headed Sentinel? It's actually kind of cool. Let me kind of go into more detail about this. The three headed Sentinel uh, originally appeared in a comic a long, long time ago in the A's called uh, Acts of Vengeance. And it was a storyline where um, the villains were trading um, superhero um, adversaries. So, de- so like, for example, Magneto became an uh, enemy for Captain America, I think. Uh, and, like, it was a cool, it was a kind of a thing. I think the Kingpin uh, set up, I forget who. But all the villains switched their adversaries. And so if you're a Spider-Man villain, you suddenly started to attack, like, Captain America and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. But at the end of it, the it was a there was a being created by a robot created by Loki called the Tri Sentinel, and it was basically a sentinel, a three sentinels put into one, uh, and that's sort of like what you saw in the in this episode, but a lot dangerous, more dangerous. Hmm. Uh, and in E for e, e for Extinction, that same sentinel appeared, so it looks just like that. So again, these writers are reading the comic books, which is really cool. Uh, and let's just talk about the veracity and violence of that scene. That was really, really violent. We saw dead mutants all over the place. Mm-hmm. We crazy. Like we Some saw getting blood. vaporized by beams. It, and yeah, it was crazy. Like that was no, like, this show is not for kids. This is not like, so don't show mm-hmm. it to your kids. Mm-hmm. This is for 30 and 40 year olds who watch the comics. I mean, watch the cartoon back in the day and you're watching it now. And like, this is, a, this is, this is great. This is, it's fantastic. I didn't expect this level of action. I thought it was going to be a very quiet episode until we saw this action, and it was just amazing. Um, I see in your show notes that you're asking about who Callisto is. Yeah. Um, so Callisto is the leader of the Morlocks, and that's who Gambit ends up saving. Remember, uh, Magneto said that they were trapped, and then um, one of the guys said that they don't care about Morlocks, but then Gambit shows up to save them. Right. And, and we, I've talked about the Morlocks before. Morlocks are mutants that live underground because um, they they have like a, they have disabilities and stuff, so they don't look too human. I think they saw. I think we saw Callisto die in this episode, actually. So I think she might be dead. What's she look like? She had a, a kind of black hair, but she had an eye patch over her eye. 
Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do think that she dies, actually. Okay. Yeah. We just got a crazy... Leech crazy. was like... Leech was like... um, Saying, you know, either Callisto or... Um, Magneto will save us. So yeah, yeah, and like there was a great fight with Magneto and the, and the huge Sentinel. But the Sentinel, this monster Sentinel, this major Sentinel, I call it a master Sentinel. It's just, it was too big for anybody to stop. And like, mm-hmm. I, I like the fact that they could see. Here's the deal: we could be seeing mutants, like like, like little like villain mutant villains attacking the the X Men and the and the other mutants. But that's not what we're seeing. And and. X-Men no, it's, it's, it's has humans only, controlling yes, Sentinels, yeah. Yes, the only thing we've seen in X-Men 97, besides Mr. Sinister, is just Sentinels and humans. Right. So it's really cool to see that, because that's how it looks in the comics as well. Um, the fight takes a turn. Magneto takes this thing head on. It looks like Magneto might be dead. We don't know for sure, because we don't see a body. Um, but we... But we do, like, Rogue tries to go after the big Sentinel, but then Gambit sort of knocks her out the way. Mm-hmm. And then Gambit goes after it, and the big Sentinel stabs him in the, in the side. Yeah. And then Gambit infuses the big Sentinel with all his energy, and it, right. it explodes. Right. Um, but, de- but Gambit is definitely dead. Um, and yeah, the I last scene... I do where- not like that. He is one of my favorite X-Men. Um, well, listen, listen to me. It, there's got to be a way of bringing him back. Well, hang on. Well, when Rogue at the end says, I can't feel you, and she's touching him without her glove on, you can't help but have him. You have to have an emotional reaction. Mm-hmm. The whole episode was building up to that, and it was really, really well done. I mean, yeah. this, feel, like, this feels like a, mid, a mid-season finale. Like a season finale, right. is, we all understand that. But some shows like Arrow and a few others have mid-season finales where it's like okay this is the middle of the season Mm. after this we're going to show reruns until the next season starts in spring so like it's like the the season starts in fall we have a bunch of episodes we have a mid-season finale and then somewhere in january or february the show starts back up again and then it goes on to april Mm. and so this would we're not this this isn't going to happen to here but they definitely are using a mid-season like like this is episode five is a ten episode season. Right. This is definitely a good way to kind of bring things up into a big bang and then go back down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, now, to ask me if Gambit's will come back, my answer is maybe, and here's why. Okay. Cable is an enemy of Apocalypse, so when he said he's coming, I have a feeling that Apocalypse is going to show up. Okay. And, at, and Apocalypse has. You use Gambit as now, who's of, Apocalypse is the uh, villain that was in one of the movies, right? He's like yes, the movie Egyptian. called X Men Apocalypse. Yeah, the movie called X Men Apocalypse. Yeah, it was named after him. <laughs> yeah, the one you didn't watch. No, I watched it. It was good. <laughs> it was good. Um, I just keep getting him confused with like all these, like um, the planet eating villain, Galactus. Galactus. There you go. Well, one. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Okay. All right. I mean, they're both villains that I don't have much of a reference for. Like most, like most villains. Right. Um, here's the deal: Galactus. If Galactus shows up and try and re and resuscitates or uh, or not resuscitate, what's the apocalypse? Word? Yeah, if apocalypse shows up. Oh God, you said Galactus. If apocalypse shows up and brings Gambit back to life, that would be cool. Um, Mike, I don't know if this show will bring him back. I don't know. I, I'm just going to mm-hmm. say that right now. I want, you can hope. Yeah. But, and, and in I'm comics, hoping. You nev- in comics, you never know. In comics, people come back to life all the time. I think, I think Gambit's got died a couple times. All the X-Men yeah. have died multiple times. Scott's died multiple times. Jean Grey's died a zillion times. Um, well, um, is there a way Mo- Moira McTaggart can respawn Gambit? Well, here's the deal. This is what could happen. Everything could get really bad. Mar McTaggart could die, but then she is resurrected. Mm-hmm. She comes back, and then the timeline starts over. But I don't, that's really esoteric. And I don't think this show can pull the weight of explaining Mar McTaggart's mutant ability. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would take a lot of work. So I don't think they're going to do that. But they could, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't put it past them. Mm-hmm. Here's what I would say, Mike. Yeah. I hope that game will come back. But it won't be time soon, and it's going to take a while. So, mm. I think I think they got to show his death respect. I mean, he did sacrifice his life, 
But yeah. also, he is a fan favorite, and they they're not going to ignore that fans have little gambit. Right. So this is a comic book show. We've seen characters die left and right all the time. I mm-hmm. understand you're a little stressed. Just just relax. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but there's a couple of Easter eggs I want to mention. And this is one. Did you see um, The Watcher? Yeah, The Watcher. Yep. Mm-hmm. You, you saw? I didn't see him. This he shows up I, uh, right before the fireworks go off. Like, what they're doing. Not sure why he's there. Well, they're, just, they're making connections, Mike. And we're going to talk about this in a second. Mm-hmm. They're making connections. They're saying, hey, you've seen What If. You understand multiple universes. You're watching X Men ninety seven. Right. You understand that this is a multiple universe. Mm-hmm. Let's start thinking about other things you understand. And it's a really interesting way of storytelling, bringing things you recognize to help make connections to things you see for yeah. upcoming things. If the watcher is looking like that, then you should start expecting to see a lot of cool things from other stuff. And I'm, and I'm leading up to this, and I, I'm kind of going into news you can use territory, which is fine. Because they released a trailer just recently that's saying, hey, you know, the X-Men it's called War. was great. Say the, again? The name of the trailer is War. Yeah. And it shows at the very end, it shows the Captain America shield going, is being slammed into the ground. Right. So, And there's somebody that looks like Howard Stark or Tony Stark earlier now, in the trailer. Do you, do you know who that was? No. Uh, I have to watch it again. Okay. Um, do I, do I watch it right now? It's a key question. Uh, I'm going to unscoop. It's short, so I'll just, I'll just push it. Yes. Yeah, All right. It. I, I did hit it. And then while you're while you're doing that, so you don't have any idea who's controlling these Sentinels? Ta- Trask? We already talked to him. Oh, this guy here, um, the guy with the mustache? Yeah. He's not He's not Tony Stark or anything. I think that's Trask or one of the other guys. I forget his name. Okay. Who's Trask? He he was in the first episode. Remember? He was in the first episode. He created the he created the, the Sentinels. Oh. This okay. is interesting, Mike. Uh, there's a in the trailer, it's showing Wolverine and Nightcrawler standing together in a battle. So you're going to see Nightcrawler some more. Yeah. It shows a couple other mutants too. I'm really curious who throws the shield. Um Does it show Leech in there? Yeah, I think it's here. But here's the deal, Mike. It, we don't know how they're going to bring in the Avengers, but if... Okay, let's just establish this right now. Yeah, so we've got this new trailer. Captain America S.H.I.E.L.D. shows up in it, in an X-Men cartoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's let's establish this right now. Mm-hmm. Um, this show is a success. Can we all agree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if if I'm, if oh, by the way, the guy that was uh, let go or uh, yeah. left Disney right before this came out, he had a cameo yeah. in this episode. He did. Yeah, he shows up um, near the end. Um, I think right before uh, Rogue and Gambit go on their um, their final strike. What was he? What mean he had a cameo? Was he in cartoon form? Or what? He's in cartoon form. Yeah, him and him and somebody else, I think, are in. Oh, that's so nar- that's so narcissistic. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, we know that this is a success, and so if I was Disney and Marvel, here's what I would do: I would start thinking about, you know, it'd be a lot cheaper to do an Avengers cartoon. Just saying, it's cheap, cheap, mm-hmm. and, and if we can make it on this level, why the hell not? Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's. I mean, they're that, holding but. back on this, right? They could do a even better quality animation than this. I think that the animation style they're using works for them, uh, and I think it's fine. I mean, I mean, quality. It, the more, the better the animation looks, the more expensive it's going. And how? And the that's true, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I don't. I, that's not holding. No, I think. Back the, I think. Like the, the I think the animation is pretty good i mean it's not this, like um the it's not like top tier anime quality but it's pretty good the, the animation for the show is not what's pulling you in it's the story it's the writing 100 right. mm-hmm. the writing. So, yeah. so as long as the ride holds this level of quality this is a really good show this is a really good mm-hmm. disney property and like they couldn't have made an x-men show or x-men movie to do this they couldn't have done it 
There's uh, lots of people now saying they shouldn't do a live action X Men. No, I I agree. I agree. You agree? If they do a, if they do a live X, live action X Men, it won't it won't even come close to this. They've already they've already spoiled it. Well, I mean, you can say the same thing for everything they've done so far. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the whole MCU could have been done better as animated movies. Yeah, that's true. But here's here's. But there a, is something. There's something about live action that I, if I, you if you do it well, it resonates with people more than cartoons. Here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm going to say. We've had a ton of X Men movies. Let's give animated X Men some time to. Close. Oh yeah, sure. And like. I, I will be fine if we don't get an X. And I think this is from Disney's standpoint. Yeah. They don't need an X-Men movie for the next five years. Maybe longer. Mm. They don't need it. They don't. You don't need it. You don't need it, Mike. You don't. Well, you let's don't say it. that. Let's say this. Unless it's already in development, they can't put an X-Men movie out in five years. It's, it's going to take longer than that. It's not even close to development. Not even close. Yeah. So, like, you'll be, you'll be fine. Like this is this because they've got the so X-Men. much stuff in front of it already. Yeah, and this is the X Men I want anyway. Like I want this X Men. I don't need a movie. Like I don't need it. Like yeah. I have, I have what I want. Uh-huh. I, you know, right. they're doing the right thing, bringing Fantastic Four into the movie realm because if Fantastic Four doesn't have anything going on. They have to build that franchise from the ground up. But this, this X Men ninety seven. Why not do that as an animated show? I don't think anybody would watch it. Why not? Why? Why would you? There was one. I watched it. Yeah, a billion years ago. And plus, nobody remembers it. Like, they're taking the X-Men anime series that we loved from the 90s, bringing it back. But now the X-Men, right. from, the, X-Men from the 90s is gone. That's history. Nobody cares. X-Men 97 is king. And they're going to build on <laughs> yeah, this. right. They're, right. And they're going to make X-Men 98, X-Men 99. Yeah, X-Men I really wonder what they're going to call the next season. Is it going to be 98? Call it X-Men 98. X Men Nine Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like the idea. I'm just wondering if they're they're going to actually definitely, do that. That would be the stupidest thing in the world for them not to do that. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's just a dumb thing to do. And we're and they already said they got three seasons. They should they should go ahead and make season four. Just go ahead and green light it. Like get right. whatever you need to do. Yeah. Like this is this is this episode. Yeah, it's impressive. Like this fantastic. season already has season or this show already has season three green lit, and mm-hmm. uh, season one isn't even over yet. They're not dumb. They have they have something that's working. They did the same. They, like whenever something's working, they know what to do. Like Loki, they booked season two, right? They knew exactly. Right. They say, "Oh, this right. is good. Keep it going." Right? Yeah. They know, and like, and and the same thing with this. They know. Um, but I'm just worried that I'm not really worried about them keeping this level this level of quality up. I think eventually they'll stop just because it's a good idea not to drag things into the ground. Yeah. Um, so give it, give it four. Probably it will probably get four seasons. Um, I think X Men two thousand will probably be the last one they'll do. Um, I think after, um, I think two thousand. If they don't do any time skipping, like if they don't skip years, mm-hmm. I think two thousand and one would be a cool number to end on. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool. Um, but as a as an end note here, um, this is the bar for for Disney, like. Whatever they do next, they're going to have to figure out how to make sure this the quality of writing and production and just storytelling is on this on this caliber. I don't I, I don't know if they're up for it, uh, but I'm impressed by what I'm what I'm seeing. It's, yeah. it's good stuff right now. It's really good. Uh, what do you think is up with the journalist calling Jean Grey Marvel Girl? That's her name, and if you we remember, never ever ever hear that name, like why? Well, what? back in the day, her name was Marvel Girl when she originally appeared. When she was really in the original five X Men, yeah. So um, it's just like her code name back in the day that kind of just given her a little bit of love. Yeah, I'm just wondering why the uh, journalist calls her that, and nobody else in the show is calling her that. You know, I'm more wondering why uh, um, Angel isn't given more love in this episode. We saw him three, three or four times in this episode, but he never Ooh. goes and talk. Angel, I didn't see. He's a guy with wings flying around. I didn't see him. Right, he was there. Okay. I kind of wish they would have gave him some a little I guess more translucent pink did. man was drawing my eye too much. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um what else? What else? That's I I can't I can't I could praise this all day, but it's really no need to. Do you know who I think is controlling the Sentinels? Sure. Magneto. No. You don't think so? 
No, I you don't think not. this is his turn. You think he's really no trying to do what uh, Xavier wanted him to do. I think that at, when he comes back, when he it, when he's shown to be alive next episode, yeah. he's going to extract vengeance. So don't you worry you about so? that. Okay. Absolutely, dude. I kind of like, think this is his setup to like no, show. See, no, look, no. we tried to work with the humans. No, and this that, is what they do to us. That would be a disaster from. It would betray the people watching this show. Yeah. Because the people watching this show think that the show is respecting what they've done in the comics. And he doesn't do that in the comics, nor would he. He doesn't? Mm -mm. Seems like the kind of thing he would do. The X Men from the movies would? The X Men from the comics. Okay, so I only know Magneto from the movies, really. Yeah, the X Men from the comic books. He's a different character. And he's being treated very well in this animated series. Okay. Um, so you brought up Trask. Now, he's the one that we see in the war trailer. And yeah. he says, while you X-Men were holding hands, we were setting up dominoes. Yeah. So then, yeah, I guess he's the one that's behind the Sentinels. Yeah, it's and, a good line. Yeah. It's yeah. Pretty, it's, it's pretty good line. The writing here is excellent. They did a really good job. Yeah. Um, so... My only my only disappointment is that they built Genosha up just to destroy it. But I'm curious how they're going to use Genosha moving forward. It's not completely destroyed. Yeah, it's not but totally it's, destroyed. It's pretty rough. Uh, and I, I can't wait to see how Scott and the rest of I mean, it was really concentrated back. in like one area. If you look at the um, the footage from the, the journalist mm-hmm. at the end of the episode, there's like the whole island and then there's this big built up area, and then on the built up area, there's like destruction on maybe half of half of that. I don't know. I will say this, and then we'll wrap up and get to some news you can abuse. Um, okay. This is like if you're watching this, like this is how we would probably treat mutants if they actually existed, and it's this is consistent with the comics and it's heartbreaking because those kids, everybody there was having such a great time. Right. They were having, they were free and they were just enjoying themselves. And all of a sudden they were just completely attacked. And mm-hmm. I was surprised that the show was going to go so hard. Um, but, I, but I was pleasantly surprised. So yeah. I can't wait. Like, the next episode is going to be going back to storm probably. Um, which is yeah, life. Death but, two is next episode. Uh, that's good. But the, the, the kind of weak stuff that we saw with Mojo and stuff in episode four, this, we don't need that anymore. Like, stop. Right. Okay, right. stop. Stop, yeah. stop. We're done. Like, we tried that little thing, and it's not good. Uh, let's go back to, to the, the adults. Okay. Yeah. Um, news you can't abuse. I already talked about the X-Men, the Avengers and X-Men 97. I don't want to get into too much speculation, because I'm sure a bunch of people are already going to be speculating about how they're going to show up and everything else. Um, Is it Captain you, America or Captain Britain? It's Captain America, because... Captain Britain has a shield, but has it, it has the like stars that. and stripes on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I, if we're going to see the Avengers, we're not going to see them until the ninth or tenth episode. And I think it would be they show up on the ninth episode, and then we get some kind of crazy reveal or cliffhanger. It's, and you, it, my listeners, you should prepare yourself for a, a season-ending cliffhanger that you're going to have to wait for. So just prepare yourself. Mm. So it's going to be painful. It's going to be the Borg showing up in Star Trek painful. Okay. And Borg Picard level painful. And I'm sure, Mike, you don't know what I'm talking about, but everybody else does. So it's fine. Um, I remember the get, Borg showing up. Do you remember when Picard became a Borg? Yeah. Uh, Locutus of Locutus, the Borg. Yeah. That, it's going to be that level cliffhanger, Mike. Yeah. That level. We, we're going to have to wait until. For three months to watch it, which doesn't mm. seem that long now that I think about it. When I was a kid, it took forever. I feel like it was about. I mean, it's going to be longer than three months. It's going to be like. Oh, a, it's going to be like a year. A year, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a long cliffhanger. Yeah. All right. Um, Mike, news you can abuse. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. says he'd play Iron Man. Um, more like Robert Downey Jr. says he'll get a paycheck and they'll give it to him. It's just that, that's not. This isn't. This is news, I guess. Mike, you care about this more than I do. You want to see Robert Downey Jr. back as Iron Man. Do I? You, do. you go. You go. You deal with this one. Uh, you have the floor. I mean, I feel like maybe this article's a little bit late. Because all of the talk about Disney and Marvel needing to bring back Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man and Chris Evans as Captain America seems like it's 
gone away. Like that's no longer being talked about. It was being talked about a month or so ago, but it doesn't seem like anybody's talking about it anymore. So it seems a little bit late. Um, Maybe he's going to come back for Secret Wars. I really don't know what Secret Wars is or why he would be able to come back for that, but that seems to be like what people are talking about. If he's saying that he would come back, then he probably is going to come back. And I think it would be a short cameo if he does. It would be like a five or ten minute thing where where we see his face. Some kind of multiverse thing or something um i gotta say man the multiverse is wearing thin on me so i don't oh yeah i don't care about that at all don't do that and and i mean i would prefer to see a what if iron man movie where he never died and we get a you know a little bit older version of robert downey jr as iron man I would prefer to see the writing that the writing team of X Men ninety seven <laughs> be given the kings of the castle and let them do whatever they want and just give them money and get out of their way. Well, don't question it. Don't worry about it. Just let them do it. Take one off doesn't work there anymore. Control of all Marvel, <laughs> ca- all Marvel properties and let yeah. them do what they want. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't. I would be like, here's your checks. You get a direct deposit every every two weeks. <laughs> as long as we're making money off what you're doing, go nuts. If we get sued yeah. every once in a while, I'm fine with that. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, because it's working. You're not like, you're not joining the people that are calling for Bo DeMeo to be uh, rehired, are you? No, because uh, we I'm, don't know what he did. So we don't know what he did, and I yeah. am I am I am saying. That however you created this, and I don't think that guy was the. I think the writing staff behind it was doing the real work. Yeah, um, right. Those kid, those, and that's, that's probably young kids. Give those guys the the respect they deserve. Pay them what they need, and let them be fun. And this, and this is going out to everyone out there who has a lot of money who wants to make something cool, like a video game, cartoons, comics, books. If you really want cool stuff. Stop trying to figure out how ChatGPT can do it and just let nerds be nerds. Let them cook. Let them do what they want. And they will make amazing things. Because the only thing stopping these kids from making amazing things is money. They don't have the money resources to do it. And so if I was Disney, if I was Disney, I would be going to every graphic design school, every like creative writing or literature program in the country, I would look for the most creative, interesting kids out there and be like, how would you like to write a show? <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. how would you like, to, and like here's here's two hundred thousand dollars. What would you do with it? You know, <laughs> instead of like, eh, I don't know if we should we can we bring Robert Downey Jr. back? Like, oh, oh, come on, it's, it's we're done. We're done. Yeah. And actually, 97. X-Men 97. I thought I was going to be done with this, but I'm not. X-Men 97 is showing what happens when you risk take. Good things come of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I'm curious how DC's gonna respond to X-Men 97. Like what are they gonna do? We have you heard of any D- have you heard anything from DC? Have we what are they doing? They're working on the Superman movie. No. <sighs> you don't you don't care about the Superman movie. I just thought about the ending is to the original Superman movie, the original um Chris Marie Superman movie. Yeah. Um the emotional response when he finds out that Lois is dead and he pulls her out of the crack in the ground and he screams and flies into the sky. Yeah. That's an amazing three minutes of tele- of movie. That's, a, that's I'm gonna mm. watch it probably. I'm gonna watch it again. Yeah. The whole movie's kinda garbage, but that last scene where he picks her up and he mm-hmm. starts crying and screaming, mm. like that's it's like that's good stuff. I put that in my veins. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's nice. Anyway, I don't know why I mentioned that. I don't think DC's going to re- re- uh, re- respond to this. Um, they've already had a pretty good go of cartoons. You know? When? The, there's been a ton of Batman animated cartoons. and Oh, yeah. I a lot of them have the, been pretty good. I forgot good. about the best animated series ever been made is Batman animated series. <laughs> right. Like, what? What? <laughs> What? Oh, Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. But you know, Batman the Animated Series was... Mark Hamill as the Joker. But you know that Batman the Animated Series was sort of a response to X-Men the Animated Series. So... Yeah, yeah. Dude, what if Disney brought back the Batman the Animated Series? 
Don't make me. Disney? Don't make me hope. Or don't DC. Me, oh, yeah, what did I say? Disney? You oh. said Disney. What if DC did that, though? Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. Wouldn't that be good? Wouldn't that be so cool? Yeah. I mean, they say they're gonna, they're all in. Like, you know, he uh, James Gunn has control of all of their... Bring back Mark Hamill was the Joker? Yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh! That'd Although the uh, the the voice um, actor for Batman, I think he died. So yeah, he died. Sadly. Yeah. All right, I think we're done. Unless you yeah. got anything else you want to say, say Mike? Uh, oh yeah, I got a question for you, Mike. How? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How can listeners? Because we're 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 on a run here. Right? We got the good That's right. stuff. That's right. No one else has a podcast like this, do they? Do Not they? that I know of. No, this is the only podcast like this. This is the only podcast. This is the only podcast and the only YouTube channel that deals with X Men ninety seven. You can and, only get it here, and you get like so much information. Like you there's so things much. that you're you're watching this show and you're like, I don't. What's going on here? So much information. You tell me you listen to the podcast and you find out the answer to those questions. I would say that if you if you're a consistent listener to the podcast, you know more about comics than your average person. I've learned. So much Nothing. about comics. You haven't learned. I'm actually kind of worried that I know too much about comics now at oh, this point. Did we do a quiz to serve list? my role on the podcast where I'm supposed to be asking questions about comics. You know, comics. A- after X Men Nice, after after we wrap X Men Nice Seven, I'm going to do an X Men quiz on your mic and see how. You oh, know okay, that's a good idea. That, that'd be a good show. Okay. Um. Rate us, subscribe us. You can find us on hit that episodes, share button, Instagram, Mastodon, Patreon, Threads. I gotta work on the Patreon. Threads, YouTube. Um, if you're on, I've YouTube, got Patreon ideas. I've got Patreon ideas. Oh, okay. Keeping it on the download for now. Hmm. Send us your YouTube clips. Have fun. Um, we love talking to you guys. We love you guys. You've been great. You've been great. Keep it up. And um, I guess Mike will see you next week, right? Yeah, we'll see you next week.